Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all have paid $1.25 for this. I'm not too fond of how it looks, but we are going to transform this into something absolutely beautiful. Stay tuned. $1.25 isn't bad for this. Y'all know on my channel, we take the inexpensive like this and we turn it into something absolutely gorgeous. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Thank you all so much for the wonderful and positive ways in which you support me and my channel. Y'all, I really do appreciate receiving all of the positive comments and words of encouragement. And I love the way you jump in in the comment section and help each other out when someone might need assistance or they might be looking for something. That is what I call community and family. And I believe and I know that I have the best online crafting family on all of YouTube. And if you're not a member of my Patreon but you'd like to join to help support my channel, the link is in the description box. My Patreon pledge is $5 a month. And I would love to have your support because it helps to make it possible for me to continue to do what I'm about to do. So y'all, this box used to look like this. Totally, totally transformed it and turned it into a very beautiful, beautiful box. It's perfect for any season, any reason, anyone. All you have to do is change the paper to make it fit your need. I'm going to give you a closer look at this in just a minute. But y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all. So here's an overhead look of that round box that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. And you can see that it's just one of those cheapo boxes that you can get from the Dollar Tree. Sort of reminds me of an ice cream um, container. But we're going to take this and I'm going to show you the process for taking it and turning it into a beautiful, beautiful box like this. Y'all, I covered this inside as well as outside and I think that it is absolutely beautiful very easy to do this is going to be one of those process videos because your box size might differ but by following the process you'll be able to take any round box that you want and turn it into this so I put the lid back on and my lid does have a very snug fit and that's exactly what I want then I use some paper ribbon which is also a sticker I use that to trim it out and then on the top I just use one of my little birdie flowers and some crinkle seam binding. I think that's all that I need. So here's how we're going to make this. So y'all what I have are three pieces of 12 by 12 scrapbook weight paper. This paper really has the consistency of a paper that you would place in your copier or your printer. And the reason why we want to use a paper like this is because we're going to be folding over the roundness and you want to make sure you get as smooth of a fold as you can. If you use a heavier paper, then that paper might actually bubble when you fold it over or it might pucker. It might build up more than you want and then it might almost be impossible for you to get your lid on. But using this method, we're going to be able to make it work. Now one of the things that I noticed is that the inside of this box is blue. I could probably get away with using the inside uncovered because I do have blue flowers. I'll probably go ahead and cover the inside because you guys need to see that as well. But for those of you who have a Hobby Lobby near you, this particular paper is from Hobby Lobby's The Paper Studio. And this one is actually from a paper pad that I got from Hobby Lobby as well. So here's how we do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this lid part because the lid had um, some foam dots that had that on top. So we need this to be flat. Then we need to figure out the size of our box. So all I'm going to do is place it in my scoreboard to see how big it is. And it's about four and a quarter inches tall and that's fine so all we're going to do now is we're going to take our paper and I'm going to take my 12 by 12 
and I know it's four and a quarter, and then I want to add a fold over. So I am going to add three quarters of an inch, and we're just going to make it five. So I'm going to cut a strip that is five by 12. Again, all I did was, this is four and a quarter, so I know I need to cover all of this, and then I added three quarters of an inch so that I can fold over on the inside. So I'm gonna take this paper and place it down and see if it'll go all the way around. It won't, so I am going to have to cut another piece, and I am going to cut a piece that is three by five because I only have a small gap in the back that I need to fill in. So here's what we need to do for the body of the box. I am just going to take my tape and I'm using my one and a half inch tape and I'm just placing it around this whole thing. So I'm going to cover this whole box in tape. And I'm just going to cover the whole thing in tape. And then once you have the whole thing covered in tape, we're just going to go along and burnish that tape in so that we have a really good stick like that. So now we just need to remove all of the tape backers. So now we're just going to take this, and y'all, it's going to be very similar to how we wrap the tissue box holder for the car. So I am just going to place it down like that. Let's get it placed at the bottom. And then I'm just going to go around and try to get it stuck as close to the bottom as possible. Like that. And then we'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to get that as close to the bottom as we can. So now I'm just going to make sure that I have it nice and stuck by going along and just burnishing everything I like that. And y'all, I think that's going to be a very beautiful box. Now I'm going to bring in my glue and I am just going to take my glue and we're going to place glue on the inside like that. And we're going to do this in stages. So we're just going to take this. We're not even going to make the slits that you guys are used to making whenever we make a round box. We're just going to take it, fold it over in stages, because then we're going to go in and smooth that out. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some more glue to the inside like that. And I'm placing the glue on the paper. So again, I'll fold over. I'm just going to make sure we have a really good fold over. Let's go ahead and put our glue in on that paper. I'm going to fold over. And I'll do my last bit. And now we'll fold this over. And now I can take my bone folder, go on the inside, and make sure I have that nice and stuck. Go along the top, make sure that I have it nice and stuck. And you can see how beautiful this is already turning out to be. So now I'm going to take this piece that I cut at three by five and we're going to place it down right here. So I am just going to add tape to this. And I'll place my tape right there. And it's such a small piece that when I fold over, I can fold over this small piece with the tape. And then we're going to place our piece right here.
go ahead and peel away the tape backer. And now we can take this piece and we're just going to place it down right here at the bottom. Get that nice and stuck. And then we'll stick it like this. I'll take my bone folder, go in, really work that in so I can hide that seam as best I can. Now we can take the small piece and we can just fold it over because it already has the tape on it. So let's fold it over like that. Let's go in and get that nice and stuck. See how pretty that is? We're going to go ahead and cover the inside. I have this much left over from that original 12 by 12 inch piece that I started with when I covered this. We're going to go ahead and place it in. It is nine inches. We're going to cut two four inch strips. So I have two strips that measure four by seven. And what you're going to need to do is, you know that this is four and a quarter, so if you cut the inside at four inches high, then you know that the fold over piece is going to be very well hidden when you place it on the inside. So really all you need to do when you're working with your box, no matter the size, however tall it is, reduce it by a quarter of an inch if you're placing an inside liner. Make sure that inside liner is a quarter of an inch shorter when you place it in then you're probably going to need more than one piece so you'll have to do some test fitting and I'm starting with two pieces that measure four by seven. I might trim the second piece a little bit but this time I'm going to place that inside liner using glue. I need the wiggle room of the glue. The tape would be an immediate catch and I might not be able to get it placed properly. So I am just going to take this and let it take a curve, place it in, slide it all the way down, and look at how beautiful that is. So I am just going to use my bone folder to go in and get that nice and stuck. Then I'll use my paper towel so I can just go in with my hand and do an even deeper burnishing. I love how this is turning out. So we're going to take this piece, place it in, and I don't think I'm going to remove any. So I'm just going to put them in overlapping. But this is just the process that you would follow if you have a round box that you want to cover and your box size is different from the one that I'm using. So I am going to take this piece, do that same thing. We're just going to round it a little bit so that we can slide it into place. Now I'll use my bone folder to go in and get that nice and stuck. I'm not going to do anything to the bottom because the bottom really takes on the colors of my paper very well. So I'm going to leave the bottom as is, but if you want it to cover the bottom, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute because we have to cut out a piece for the lid. This doesn't look anything like that box that we started with. It looks completely different. So for this bottom, I am not going to cover it with paper. I'm actually going to take some paint and just dab some paint on the bottom. So we'll do that in a minute. We're going to go ahead and cover the lid. Again, I'm not going to cover the inside because I think the inside looks just fine. But what I am going to do is, is see if I can peel away just a little bit of that paper that's on the inside. Because all I'm trying to do at this point is just reduce a little bit of that fold over bulk that's there from the original paper. You don't have to remove a lot. You can just take your fingers and run it to wherever you feel a bumpy point. And then I'm just using my finger blade to dig in a little bit. And then I'll grab that bumpy part and just remove it. I just need some of that bulk on the inside not to be there. 
So there, I'm just doing that in places wherever I see one piece of that fold over has buckled. And just thinning it out a little bit because that's going to make it easier for my fold over to go on as well as make it easier for me to put the lid on and take it off. So now we're going to go ahead and cut out our lid. I am going to take my pin and just trace around like that. Then when we cut out for the lid, we need to make sure that we're leaving a little bit to fold over. So I'm just cutting me out a little circle. That lid is going to go on this circle and then we're going to fold over on the side. We're not folding over yet for the underbody, just folding over for the side. And all of this will start to make more sense in just a minute. But I am just going to take my tape and I'm going to cover the top of the lid in tape. And now I'll peel away the tape backer. We're going to take this piece and we're just going to place it down like that, making sure that we get it nice and stuck. And then all we're going to do is we're going to take this piece, the edges, and we're going to fold them over like this. And I'll do it with glue because the glue makes it go down a whole lot better. So I am just going to be nice and generous with my glue. And again, I'll just do this in sections. So we're just going to fold over. You're going to have some puckering. That'll be okay because we'll fix it. I'm just going to keep going around getting that stuck I can take my bone folder while it's still a little wet go around and smooth it out my hands are just covered in glue right now really really sticky so I'm just going to place my glue on that paper and we just keep folding over until we have the whole thing folded over and then we'll go back and try to work in some of those areas that might have puckering all right so once you have it down you're just going to take your bone folder or your big old spatula whatever you're using and let's just go along and burnish those puckers getting them as flat as we can that is why I used a lot of glue because I really do have a lot of wiggle room here to be able to do this and just keep working it until you have it nice and flat and it's going to look like this so now I'm just going to trim off a piece to cover the side and to determine how wide my piece needs to be I'm going to take my lid put it in and this piece is about three quarters of an inch so I am going to cut a strip that is one and three eighths so I need to cover the outside and I need some to fold over on the inside so I'm cutting a strip that is one and three eighths I'll cut a second strip that is one and three eighths because I know I'm going to need that but I won't need the whole strip so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm using the quarter inch tape and we're going to place it like this and then I'm going to place another strip underneath it then I'm just going to peel away the tape backers we're going to take this piece and when we place it down we're going to place it down very close to the top and we're going to go all the way around with that placement
So I'm not sure if you can see how closely I placed this piece to the top, but I did place it fairly close. Now I'll just use my phone folder, go around, and get that burnished. So now I'm going to take some more glue and we're going to fold over. So I am just going to take my glue, place my glue like this, and we're going to fold over just the same as we did on the box body. So we're just going to fold over, getting it nice and tight. Get it as close and tight as you can because you don't want too much bulk because we still want our lid to be able to fit. So I am just going over that. We're getting that down. I'm going to go on the inside and just go ahead and smooth that out a little bit while it's still wet. We'll place our glue right here. And go ahead and get this last little section folded over. So I'm just bending it and folding it over. And now I'm just going to go in and really force that glue to come out and stick down this paper. And I'll go along the outside just to make sure I have it as smooth as I can get it. We have this little section here that we need to cover and we have that extra piece that we cut. So I'm just going to cut off a little bit like that. And this time I'm just going to use glue on the whole thing. So I'm just going to take my glue, be very generous with the glue Take this, fill in that gap, like that, and then I'll fold over like this. And now I just want to get that nice and stuck and even. go on the inside make sure I go all the way around getting everything nice and stuck because this is going to be a very snug fitting lid but the more you put it on and take it off put it on and take it off it loosens so I am just smoothing everything out because I want it to be so cute and there is my lid I'm not going to do anything to the inside, leave it as it is, and fit it on the box. And you can see how beautiful that is. Your lid is going to be very tight, but you just need to keep putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, and it will loosen. So the key to making sure that it's going to loosen and not be too, too snug is when you're folding over this paper, Make sure you're using a thin scrapbook type paper that would go through your printer and then when you fold it over, make sure you go in and get it as smooth as you can. That's going to be the key to the success of your lid. So all that's left now is to decorate our box and I think I want to go with some of these little flowers that I have from a company called Petaloo. And I am just going to position them along the top like that. I am going to add some crinkle seam binding. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of that crinkle seam binding. Go ahead, tie me a little bow. I don't know if you guys can see all that glue on my fingers, but I have glue everywhere. Then I'm going to take the crinkle seam binding and just place it down 
with a little bit of hot glue. Then I'll just take my flowers and position them however I want them to be. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the flowers down and then I'll work in those petals. So there's one, there's another one, and there's my last one. And I like how that looks. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to this petal. We're going to place a petal right there and then a little more glue and we're going to sneak in a petal right in there. And y'all I absolutely love this so I'm just going to go ahead and put it on. Then I think I'm going to trim my crinkle seam binding just a little bit and now y'all we have our second beautiful little rehabilitated box. I didn't like the box in its original state, but the box had good bones and we don't always have to recreate the box from scratch. So this is how my box looks. I am going to paint the bottom of my box and we'll be done. So I have removed the lid so that I can paint the bottom and I have paint on here way more than I need. I thought I had some pouncers, but I don't. So I'm just going to go ahead and just spread my paint out like this. If I was able to pounce it on, it would go a whole lot quicker. So this is going to take several coats. See how when I pounce it on, it goes a whole lot quicker? So I am just going to pounce to get my first coat on. All right, so we have our we have our one coat on. We're going to let that dry and then I'll be back. All right, y'all. So here is the bottom of the box. I only added one coat because I think that covered it pretty well. I am going to go back and add some Mod Podge to this, but I don't have any more brushes, but I am going to add Mod Podge to the bottom to seal it. And this is the Mod Podge that I'll be using. I'll be using the matte finish. So I'll use one coat. That's all it will take to protect the bottom of this. Use a spray sealer if you want. I'm just going to use some Mod Podge because that's what I have. But that is a quick and easy way to finish off the bottom if you don't want to add paper to the bottom. I'm going to take my beautiful little lid. We're going to put that back on. You can see how well it fits and you can also see how beautiful this is. This is not the same box that we started with. It has become so much more. And I'm going to bring that first one back in so that you can see both of these and you're able to see how gorgeous they both are. Y'all, it was super, super easy to do this. Just follow the process for whatever size box you might be working with and cover yours in some beautiful text weight or very lightweight scrapbook paper for ease of use. So what do you think of this process? Sometimes we don't have to build our own boxes. Sometimes they're already made. They just need to put on a pretty dress and that's exactly what we did right here. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed today's super awesome way to cover a pre-made box. If you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.